It's been a while. So we're starting with our bolster, spine wise on a mat, and just get kind of sorted out where your blanket in a roll is at the base. I think a nice way to um, balance your um, physique is that you're gonna to sit towards the edge, the short end of the bolster. I might end up running into my wall here, okay? And then as you launch your legs forward onto the blanket, you kind of want your ankles sort of hooked on that blanket. So I would be a little bit fussy about that. This whole beginning of sensation might take you a few moments of figuring out how your legs are. It's not like you're trying to fit your legs on your bolster so they don't fall off, but it'll feel like your buttocks are kind of on the side. And as you shift back, then you have room to flow back if you, if you need to. So I want you to work on this necessary deep sensation of chest and lung and rib cage lift. So that way, if your legs kind of flow a little bit outwards, even if you only feel your feet do that, and you're using your blanket to kind of set your feet, and you might have to get up and down and rearrange the ankle support, but the sand of the legs will allow us because I'm going to kind of flow a little bit back. So my shoulders are pushed up. You know, I'm on the bolster with the shoulders. My arms open out. And so it feels like I'm elevated a little bit with the bolster. Okay, supported bridge. Some of us will find the blanket like this quarter fold works good. Some will want very little. So they'll make it lower. Just kind of slide it back, flow it out. Take your time to fuss a bit, and then maybe feel if your feet closer together and maybe the toes have kind of this extended mo motion. They're not fully pointing, but they feel like they kind of flat forward. Or maybe your feet turn out a little bit. I'm gonna set my feet a little bit wider on my blanket so that I don't have much issue with rotation. And then as you follow inwards with the movement of the breath, Sense the inhale length for four to five counts. If that seems a little much, then just stay with three to four. And as you exhale out through the mouth, maybe some of us, we, we like to do our breath through the nose. It seems to be a very popular technique, but I like to do whatever feels natural in the moment. So I don't feel like I'm holding everything in and the passageway out through the mouth might feel a little more full body. Okay, so as we experience hmm, the places that are elongating and extending and the mind settling into the breath. I hope you have your eyes open, you might be looking <clears throat> maybe to the screen or to something in your room. So you might close your eyes and center on the pace of breath. And even the sound of breath. It's been a while since you've been in a deep stretch like this for the, <clears throat> the breathing muscles. It might surprise you some of the things that kind of come up or feel pressure or even the circulation in the face. And now my arms are pretty easeful. There's not any pressure holding on to anything. In fact, I'm, I'm working towards releasing and finding where there's some balance across the, the chest and maybe it is a wisp of it into my shoulders. I know those areas might have ingrained differences anyway. Okay, now we're gonna shift our sand off and you know, entertain a thought here. Maybe it's a thought that you, you entertain first. 
<clears throat> but when you bring your feet up to the bolster, everyone's different lengths. Some of you might be stepping on the floor right now, not on the bolster. Some of the feet can be on the very edge. Feel when your feet are up onto that space or just below the bolster. And maybe the knees can move out. We're not going to be in this more than 10 seconds, but I want you to just get a feel of the challenge when your back has this much lift for a reclining cobbler's pose. Just kind of notice that the rib cage um, is quite carved in on this position, kind of that pull into the stomach line, that circulation that embodies the organs. Okay, and then bring your knees back up and the feet on the floor. Okay, and then as we lift up our hips, we're gonna get a hold of that bolster. So I would just get a little bit close to turning it. So this will take you a lot of leg energy to hold this. So you're gonna keep the hips up, feet wide as you need. Turn your bolster, as awkward as I know it is. You're gonna turn your bolster horizontal. Now it's under the pelvis. Okay, if you need to get up and down, I, I understand, but see if you can manage this in this awkward state of on your back. And then I'm lifting my feet up, my knees up, of course. I guess if my feet come up, my knees are already up. And I'm gonna walk, uh, wander a little side to side until I get a block or ball between the knees. And when you have that support of the ball, I want you to squeeze into it. And if it's a block, it's not gonna respond quite the same. But if I move my arms, just like, they're not quite cactus with elbows bending. You're trying to kind of spread out with the arm muscles. Um, you know, if you do like, if you hold little hand weights and you pump them up and down, that kind of pattern. So you move open like flies, right? The exercise, I mean. Well, the opposite of that, huh? So squeeze in to the ball and then bring the knees to the right. And I want you to hold that position, not necessarily hold the squeeze, but the knees to the right side and see if you can move them up towards the arm on the right side. Don't try to move the arm towards the legs. Try to move the legs towards the arm. Okay, and it's, it's really the right side of your back that's trying to lengthen. So let's say you feel like this bolster is not as supportive as I want. You might need to move yourself a little bit downwards on the bolster. So it's, you know, holding your lower back a little bit. Okay, bring the knees back to center and then right away over to the left. If you're focusing on squeezing into the ball, that's okay. But I would recommend that you feel the energy of the knees moving towards the left arm that length in the back. And I feel there's different sensation on second side. I'm, I'm aiming the same way, I'm focusing similar. But as we come back in center, I go back to the first side, but keep going side to side without a hold and loosen up the track of the back and be slow and maybe not as far over, like as detailed. As you were a moment ago trying to get the knees towards the arm, I kind of held there too long, but keep moving side to side, looks good. Get a feel of motion in the back. Maybe train your mind to feel, focus in back, knees side to side. And then as you move the knees back into center, moving the ball or block away and right knee in towards the, the chest, but maybe chest is over, overdoing it. I want you just to feel that you pull that knee in, left leg stretches down towards the blanket. Perfect, so you get to feel that right back side and then change the left leg now in towards your center. Maybe just where it goes in comfortably. Maybe it doesn't really pull to your chest. And then change one more each side. And can you kind of feel if it's sensation in the back of the waist or if it's like in, getting into your hip? So we're gonna hold this leg in the, the left leg 
towards you. You're going to feel that left leg moving in. And let's try reclining pigeon. Let's just see how it goes. So you're going to move your right foot this time up to that left knee. So you're lifted, I know, so it's a little bit of a challenge with the bolster under us. So you have to be far enough forward on the bolster. Of course, we're not dropping our seat on the other side. So it kind of gives you a, um, it's going to give you perspective and kind of help you advance the stretch a little bit. It kind of pushes you. So you still have to hold the back of the left leg. I think this is kind of required. If it's hard to hold the back of the left leg in a belt, it doesn't, you don't have to unbuckle it at all, but you could get a hold of the leg with your, your belt and pull it in. That's kind of interesting to explore having the belt and just feeling the circulation in this zone. But just hold the leg. <clears throat> if it's in too much for you, you can always put your foot on the ground and be here. You still get points, you still get awards, you still get prizes. But as you pull the leg towards you, you know, what do you feel through the circulation in the right thigh? In the hip? Breathing slow. The left foot relaxes. I think that's challenging <clears throat> to feel the hands kind of inserted and it brings a little momentum. You know, let's take the concentration. So yes, it's in my right leg. <clears throat> I feel both legs anyhow, but it's primarily in the right leg, the hip. And I want you to get a belt, place it under the right foot and make sure it's all buckled up. Just an extra case, we need that. And stretch the left leg, actually maybe stretch is overrated. You're gonna lower the left leg and I know you'll probably put it on the blanket or the floor, however, you, whatever you touch down to. But work with pulling, the belt and lifting the left foot up off the blanket. Okay, so it's hovering. The left foot is hovering. Try to energetically work with both feet about the same. So your I know your left foot doesn't have a belt on it, but you can kind of work with that. Reach through the left heel. This is for strength in the core body, the abdominal basin, that part of the core. So we're not gonna put the belt behind our head. I was thinking of kind of <clears throat> multiple patterns, but let's just keep it simple because our body might respond nice that way. <clears throat> not so complicated. But as you lower the left foot down, I hope you can kind of find a blanket to use for support. Relax the left foot. I know the right foot might feel like it has to be a little bit more active. Pull, and then feel where the belt is. Maybe it's under the ball of the foot. Maybe it's under the heel. You know, that could work too. <clears throat> I was kind of playing with this idea that <clears throat> oftentimes it's taught with the heel because of the hamstring emphasis. <clears throat> but you know, whenever you're stretching on like a curve, like trying to stretch out your calves, it's always the ball of the foot, right? That's going to be what you're pushing off of to stretch your calf. You can't really do the heel. I mean, you won't be able to access the, the calf that way. But kind of notice what works for you. What do you need? You know, which, which place on the foot? And the left leg is passive. They're both in some way kind of passive. You're using your arms and your belt to do the work. Okay, head is relaxed, eyes may be closed. Marinate in it for a few more moments here. Marinating. Breathing. Okay. Okay, let's take both feet up into the belt, push out, use that loop, right? So that connection, 
And then as you have your feet in this flex position, it, you might find a little bit of a kind of weird path the knees could go. They kind of torque a little bit. So get a feel that your feet are more in that very simple flexed, not overly rotated in or out, just normal, whatever normal might be here. This doesn't look very normal maybe, but don't let the feet get out of arrangement. This is their assignment on the bottom of the leg. And then bend through the knees, hold on to the belt, slide the feet together, and take the belt off and left foot to right knee like you started on the other side, pigeon. Um, we might even repeat this pigeon pattern sitting today, we'll see. But get a feel when you hold on to the back of the under, back side here of the right thigh. And when you're pulling, you can feel your left hip. Maybe, I hope you can feel some sensations in the legs. I wonder what this would be like if you use the ball in the back of the leg. Does it really do anything, does it? Does it add a massage? Does it add a stretch? Don't use it. Okay. Now, the, the left foot may have a, a focus on its own. To try to force it to flex might be a little bit unnatural for your joint. So we just don't want to, you know, overly stretch the top of the foot here either. So, you know, keep an emphasis of pulling the back of that right leg, relaxing the foot. I think that's the challenge for me, is just releasing into my lower leg bones. And you want to get something out of the, the sensation. So breathe. If you need to rock the legs a little side to side, kind of jostling into the, the tissues a little bit if they're feeling pretty stiff. Any of the poses, a little momentum movement instead of holding in stillness might be helpful today. Okay, so resistance is going on. I know you can feel it in general, huh? Now the right leg might be pretty, pretty pleasant, right? It feels like it's getting a mild momentum, but nothing too stimulating. So when you take your belt beneath your left foot, Let's see, this side, I know we just kind of launched the leg down and put it on the blanket, that's fine. But I want you to, to possibly kind of address the field of that left calf first. Yeah, I like to stretch my calf. I just feel like they're generally, can use that circulation. You know, because they move around kind of frenetically during the day. To help me to help me live. So I'm trying to give them a nice stretching upside down this, flush it out. But if your hamstring is feeling like it can't even get this type of sensation just up, you might find it serves you better to have the belt closer to your heel. Lift the right leg up. We didn't forget about the core. Hover it over the blanket. And now the energetic is like you have an imaginary belt under your right foot, you're pushing into it, you're lifting, it's doing like three things at once, huh? You're trying to keep your hips balanced, your right leg up off the blanket, the muscles contributing to your support. I mean, just showing up, we're supporting ourselves to practice, so this is great. And now when you get a feel of lowering the right foot down, relax the ankle, walk the hands up a little higher onto the belt, and then get a feel when you're bending your elbows and you're pulling. And then for some of us, this might not be a big deal, this, these stretches the back of the leg. And so work with the, the, just the spirit of inversion, right? That just reversing the flow is good for our circulation, right? Our, 
just our sinuses, all of it's going to be moved around and jostled. And so that's, that's the whole idea when we get our bolster under our pelvis, lifting up. There can be other challenges besides the muscles or the joints, but even just circulation. And you take time off from being upside down in yoga poses. It's a little bit, you missed it. It feels like I missed it a little bit. Okay, now when I move through that left leg, I know last time we did both feet up. I want you to hold the belt together with the right hand and just simply move the left leg so it's like a, straight above the hip or just a line up from the hip line. Cross the left leg to the right and hold on. So the belt could be, it could be right center of your foot. Just keep it kind of where it hooks on comfortably. And when it crosses over, now it's not going very far. I mean, I could feel it if it was even a little higher up to plenty of stretch. So we're not adding any sand quite yet. Now try to keep the leg in more of a straight line versus a lot of bendy. I know it's going to feel like it kind of hinges here at the hip, but you can't do much about that. The hip's there. You can't change it. You can't reorganize it. Well, you can try to reorganize it. And then come on up, sandwich the foot in the belt. We're simple here. Right foot up, left leg down on the blanket if it's there. If your blanket kind of got moved around, it probably won't be a big deal from here on out, because we'll be coming down in a moment. So now the right leg crosses over and you might have a different habit that you form from being in your body. You're the only one in it. So you might notice on the side, there's little places that feel, you know, a little more stiffness. So try to lubricate around the joint, keep it real pure and simple. Right arm is open. Left hand is pulling on the belt, right leg is crossed to the left. Maybe head is centered, maybe your head is rolling to the right. Not necessarily better if the head rolls, so get a feel what's cozy. Great, and then as you bring the legs straight back up into the center, bend the knee, take the belt off, and then we're going to bring both knees bending center to the left. And I want you to slide down to the foot of your mat and actually take that blanket to the back area now, the blanket that was at the foot, and you're gonna fold it up so you got the quarter fold. I don't know if that's actually an accurate description, but I like to say that. So we have our quarter fold, two blanket stack, just stack them up. And then as you add on into the side stage pose, we're gonna get a ball, maybe a block. If you use a block overhead, if you don't use a block overhead, don't bother putting one behind your blankets. It doesn't matter if you don't use it. I'm starting to go towards the, the height of it. I like that. So we got a sandbag also, let's not forget that. Once you're on your side, you're gonna be wondering where your sand went. Okay. All right, so we lean in to the left, got a ball the inside of that right leg. Feel the layer of length from the skip through the field of the leg. And then kind of notice how we're integrating and kind of merging lanes of travel here. It's like a, it's like a roundabout of sorts, kind of merging in. So, when you reach with that right arm over, take the left arm between, yeah, maybe the blankets work out fine how you set them up. Okay, but get a feel that you're, you're truly trying to merge all these areas. Okay, and you don't really exit the roundabout for a while, you're just gonna keep going around in it, so. Your head might relax, so you're more on the back of your head. You might be on the side. Yeah, the neck and the, the, the brain piece is a little tricky, isn't it? It's like, you wanna be a little careful that the vertebral spaces at the top 
right of our spine. Don't get out of line. So if I keep turning my head towards the ceiling, it might not be the best thing if it feels like I'm tightening on my neck to do that. So probably where you're most peaceful is your best bet here. And your right arm can be by your side. It could be reaching open. It could be overhead. Breathing into the ribs. Expanding. And centering. So feeling where the movement of breath is in the ribs. Is it closer to the front space like abdomen or is it really in the side? Could be either. Now start to shift to moving out of the shape. Let's kind of start out moving the sand. And you know, the, the right thigh is turned in a little bit here. And so I'm gonna turn my head so I gently push into my hands, both of them to come up. And then if you have a block behind you, take it towards your feet, move the ball. And then you'll turn your bolster and put it up on top of your blanket. So it's tilted, right? You have a little bit of a seesaw going on here. Okay. And then uncross through the legs so that your feet are together, knees are out. And you're sitting in front of your bolster on the ground in front of you, on top of the bolster. Get your belts. I guess you should get your props first before you get your feet like this. And then get a couple blocks under the thighs. Knees are out. They're just releasing out. You get your belt and it's connected. Okay. So we bring it overhead and we reach the belt over the feet. We tighten it up. And then when you notice where the buckle is, you don't have it an easy, easy reach for your hands to basically unbuckle it. I'm already on to the next stage, right? So get into this one. So you've got your belt connected and you're almost sitting on it. I mean, it's kind of, a, it's it's quite low. Like, right? so then I, I make sure that as I lower back, you, know, you can put sand on your feet. You can have one sand on each side. That's helpful to work on the hips. You can be sand free. And you can also put a sandbag here, right where the ribs intersect, which could be discussed on different lanes of placement. But some people find the legs of the best or the feet or nothing. And the generic is the weight on the, the breathing muscles. But it's up to you to, to use or not. Um, make it user friendly. You know, I think you're going to feel of the sand kind of in between the rib intersection and the diaphragm. Because it'll affect that breathing muscle. If it makes you a little bit challenged, then don't use it on the, on the breathing muscles. You don't have to. But noticing how the feet are together and the shoulders are back. Yeah, if you need something under your, your head, like maybe you wished you had that blanket, you can always, well, maybe you have another towel or something. But you can feel what, what changes the neck is also the block. So I find that, of course, if my blocks are too low, then I'm going to have more challenge in my spine arch, which will affect my neck. 
So you might need to bring your blocks a little bit higher up and kind of contour them um, under your legs. Sometimes it'll affect all the way up the body. So now I'm going to kind of slide my blocks pretty high up under my thigh. And it almost feels like it's stretching the skin of the leg a little bit. You just have to be a little cautious that it's not jabbing into your leg. You don't want to feel pain. You might feel some pressure and support, but that's enough. Okay, so guide that support that will change the whole arch pathway. Some of us, the sand is too much, right? And that might change how it feels in the neck too, because of the pressure. So find what's easeful for you. And then relax your breath. Exhale, smooth. Inhale, belly. And exhale, belly relaxes. So alternate the in and out. Can you feel the shoulders motioning back? And there might be a feeling of kind of a wedge under the legs, so it is like a wedge. So your work is on letting the body relax into the props, even those wedges. And then enjoy how the spine strengthens from the, the tilt, right, the extension. So with a few more moments here. The shoulders likely kind of tighten when you move your arms sometimes. I mean, that's real realistic, huh? But get a feel here, especially if you have sand, that's going to make it maybe a little more advanced. But feel the shoulders relaxing back. That doesn't mean that they're pushing. And then as you unbuckle, Try to just unbuckle and then keep the arms relaxed. It's challenging not to want to move it all around. I think that's that's a little much for me. I want to move everything, but then feel if you can move your knees to point up and then keep those shoulders centering back. I imagine they probably center back best, a little better when your knees are pointed up. This is like the, the best possible position for the shoulder. Now we slide the blocks out. And we'll go to side stage with the right hip down. Okay, so we'll just go from our reclining cobbler. I have a tendency to move my seat down and kind of shift my hip to the left. So that's a, a likely a smart way to just move the spine zone. So when you roll to the right, you probably need to move your bolster. We used to do this with our bolster just like this for side stage. We used to go this way. But that's just not good on our shoulder joint. <laughs> so we are. Try to do this correctly for our joints, but sometimes you learn the hard way. Um, so the left leg is centered down, my wall is on the inside, and then as I lean to this right side, yeah, see if you can be generous with the idea of length through this side effect, okay? And then you'll add some sand. You might add it at the same spot that you did last time. No requirement. Okay? No requirements at all. It's just good to have you here for class. <laughs> okay, so 
if you decide, well, I'm going to kind of do a little bit of this or that, and then maybe join, go with that, that's fine. But and this is a sequencing, right? So our circulation benefits um, quite a bit. Right now, it's still a lot of work in our ribs, our breathing muscles. This might be overstimulated for you at this point, but you haven't been doing this for a while. Um, so work with it. I need a, a block overhead, so we've got to get back to that idea. So feel, if this is a strain, like you feel like it must be good for me, it hurts, well, that's probably not a good idea. So if it is feeling like something beyond a pull and muscling length, then you might choose to bring the arm open instead or by your side, okay? Especially so if it's at the top of the shoulder, Kind of, I think of it as the bulb of the shoulder, kind of towards the front, deltoid like. Just be a little cautious here. Well, not the front, it's not the deltoid, but the anterior part. So let the body settle on its side. Relax your head to the right and down. Expanding in the ribs. So as you oxygenate and focus on that path of movement through the body, I want you to, to just noticing that you're going with this left side lengthening, okay? And when you're on your hip, on the side of your hip, the dynamic is sort of, it's, it's natural, it's an organic length in your side. It's easeful, okay? So, Take a few more slow breaths here. Take the sand slough off. And we're going to keep focus on this left side. Okay, well, we're not going to be on our right side anymore. So. You're going to start to get a little bit of energy to get upright, but roll to the right. Try to let your ribs do the movement, rolling to the ribs on the right. And then sit up on your bolster. Off we, up we are. And take a blanket stack. Let's see, I think your blankets should be tucked into your bolster. And when you're sitting, you, you certainly want to get your block out of the way from behind you. If it's there. And when you're sitting up, Let's take it so our right leg is out, left leg is bending, um, and it's it's basically in this fold position. I sometimes like a ball under it, but if my knee goes towards the ground and I can put sand on the left thigh and it seems like it keeps going, then I'm gonna use it without a ball under the knee. But if your knee is, if it feels like it's pressure on the inside, anywhere on the inside of the leg, just use the ball into the left leg, okay? So we're going to reach our right arm down to the right leg, and it could be with a belt or with nothing or with a block. So I'm gonna show you the variations to down to the side moves again, okay? So you've got your belt. You know, I, I used to always work with a belt on this one, but I'm not so sure I like the collection of pressure. So you can either try bending your right arm to the outer side of the right leg, Right? You've probably been taught this one sometimes to the inside, sometimes to the outside, more times to the inside, though. The reason I'm going outside is because the second option would be to have a block and it would be on the outside. And if I say inside, it would be incorrect. So I want your belt and your block ID to be the same. 
So I would just put my elbow down on that block besides my leg and then let the left arm either lift or be behind my back and turn your head towards the right, just towards the right side. Yeah, feel that sand on that left leg. You might even move it higher. You might move it a little lower. But whatever's organic for you, if your arm going up is not feeling good, then you eyes go behind your back. Lean into it. Feel where the flexing is through the foot. Feel the reach down. Okay, and if my arm is behind me, well, it's honestly not as big of a stretch right, for the side, like it was when I was on my side of lying down. So <clears throat> let's you know notice how this area is lengthening on the left side. And now when you sit up, <clears throat> you're, well, I know you're sitting up already, but when you come up with your spine to lift up, Lift the right arm, and I'm not asking, making an ask that you bend your arm a certain amount or tilt it. And even if your arm is here, because it feels safer for you here, I want you to work on just that the spine is up. The spine's up. Okay, game's up. The spine's up. Okay, now turn to your left. Bring the right hand down to that left leg or the sandbag. Sandbag looks good for me. And then try to work your twist through your thoracic. So your mid spine, so your rib spine, that's a nice way to think, because that's like, that's what's rotating here. It's not my lumbar. So what I'm going to work with is to really push through my right foot, just where the zone it's in. It doesn't have to go any special new space. The left hand could come down on the blankets, right? And try to get a feel. Now, if this is tightening up certain areas, joints, you might do less. You might find that you put your hand maybe behind your back but let your eyes flow in. And so when you flow the eye, focus inwards. Your work is on where, where am I rotating, right? Is it just my will of pulling on my leg to twist? And I explore the ribs moving. And then you feel that positioning axis of the spine. Okay, and just for just for fun, we're going to turn back forward. This is as fun as it gets. <laughs> if you have your belt on your foot, take it off. If you have a ball in your knee, you're going to move it. You'll slide your left knee a little bit more forward, right? So it may have been like over at 10 o'clock. Maybe it's a little more to 11. And then you'll bend through the right knee and do your best to feel the weight into your sitting bones. Okay? I know you can't magically swing your right leg over without your arms, but I want you to work your stomach muscles as much as possible to bring the right foot across. Still, even when I get my arm to help my leg over, I want to work on my mid body to lift up. So right leg crosses over left, and then I hold on to that right leg and I twist to the right side. So now I've gone both directions, left arm to the right leg, palm is open maybe, for some of us, it might be bending elbow and the arms up. And then as you twist through the waist, it should feel like a little bit of compression in the organs and in the kidneys here, which I'm assuming are organs too. Breathing. Ah. And from the spine center, let's go to the other side. So I'm going to kind of move us through the other side a little bit more general, not as much specific, so that you can go without as much verbiage. Uncross, left leg out, right foot. And then when you slide, <clears throat> actually get your sand on your right leg, that would be good. You can use your belt under your left foot, you can use your Block. I don't know if the ball would work, but maybe you could get creative with that. And then tilt your weight to that left arm or hold onto the belt with the, under the left foot. And then as you rotate to the right, 
Yeah, I need on this one. I promised I'd use less verbiage, but here we go. Is a ball under my knee. It feels like I kind of knew that. Something under that knee. So a right arm goes up or it goes back. Okay, and just kind of pause on sensation of waist, of ribs. Leaning into it. It's kind of like you're using your props again to support you, even though it's it's a little different when you're seated upright, but you are on support. So lean down to the left. Now, if your arm is over the side, good. I want you to start to give some momentum of right arm is behind you. And then twist to the right, left hand to the right leg or the sandbag. And you might notice the second side, you reach your range and your shoulder blade differently. And the more you do this, the more you notice these differences from right to left and you go, huh, maybe you don't have any imbalances. But So I'm trying to offer as much lift through my spine, which means I'm not trying to push my head back, but feel the natural strength of your amazing spine. All right, it's, it's, it's incredible, right? How that supports your, your lift or even how you round your back with it too, but try to feel the spirit of that lifted spine. And that's all I'll say about it. <laughs> Turning, breathing. Now, figure a way, you know, some of us, the knee is towards two o'clock, one o'clock, but figure when you turn the waist forward to move any ball away from under the knee and then slide. So you might have these little habits where the right knee goes a little bit more towards the midline, not that much, but just a bit. So you still want it a little out so that your foot, your left foot has to kind of hook across the leg. So when you kind of hook that foot, then you have this nice dynamic of hip, it's strengthening your hips. So one reason to do these seated kind of locks with the legs, and especially this kind of thing, where you bring your leg across um, into Matsi Andrasana, right? So you're going into this down position. You work with that angle. So turn to the left, bring your right arm to the left leg and rotate. And feel where the waist turns. Breathing slow. You might turn back forward and just notice and breathe. And <clears throat> you might rotate to the left. Come back forward, take the sand away. <clears throat> and this time, take the left leg back. And it looks like pigeon. I mentioned we might do it, but we're going to pass the pigeon today. So <laughs> pass the pigeon. Use it to get yourself to hands and knees. Okay, so bring the right leg back. I don't think we want to use a bolster here. Let's get out of the bolster idea for just a little tiny bit of time. We just use it so much. So get a couple blocks to the side of your mat. And probably this blanket stack is just a bit much. So we got one blanket in 
It doesn't have to be quarter full, right? It could be this. This might feel better for your knees. Um, and gosh, it is windy outside right now. You probably can't hear the sound of you. Maybe Susan, you can't hear it in your home, but it's really windy here. Okay, hands are wide, toes are under. Round your back into cat, chin to chest. Inhale, arch the spine. Exhale, round the back. Yeah, put that wind in your body. Inhale. And round the back. Okay, so feel the current. I know it's pretty small compared to the world current here, the sounds, but when you get a feel of that movement of the hips, they tilt. Okay, so take the hands a little wider on your mat. And then as you move your hips downwards, let the thighs, kind of the thigh lids lengthen as if you're, you're really hoping to get your quads to stretch. Okay, and I know some of us might find that we want to go down to the elbows, which is like sphinx pose. You're welcome to do that. I'm going to try to keep it here so there's some strength in my spine from the position. Not to say moving down doesn't do that, but there's resistance here, right, for my spine. And as I move back to table, reach your hips back, not, not knees up, but hips back. Head touches down. And then round your back and go fluidly forward and into that arch spine. Okay, some of us, the knees, they don't even have a uh, detail with their, their hips distance, but continue alternating these two patterns of forward and arching and pressing. Okay, now you decide if you're going to come back into a lifted knee position. You're going to alternate bending the knees. So you're kind of walking out the calf stretch. So it appears as if it's moving to dog pose. But I want you to work with walking out the calves. So stretching out the flesh of the calves. Okay, now once you find you know, a good four to six pumps on each side, that's what you're going for. Go for it. Let's bring our feet together and take a step forward with the right foot. Okay? So when you step forward, you likely have to use some blocks here under your hands. And maybe you have them at the highest setting, which I prefer. But when I angle here, I can feel a little bit of that pull to the inside of my right knee. So get a feeling for the lunge. Now, if you, if you decide, well, you're gonna press back into your left heel, so be it, that's fine. But work here with the high, a little bit higher of a lunge. So you might have to get your feet a little closer to, towards each other, because you don't wanna be splayed out into the splits. And then feel a high lunge would mean that I'm actually up, right? My, my hands are onto my leg, or my hands are in the air, they're out to the sides, but they're up and they're not down onto the blocks. So this isn't required. If you decide you want to be kind of a middle lunge, because you feel like the wind's going to blow you over, and then you, you lower down, you hunker down a bit. But get a feel for that left heel reaching back, managing that circulation. I'm glad I'm not at Riley Ranch right now. <laughs> so when you feel reaching through the heel, if you happen to still be high lunging, or high lungers, try to get the front of that left thigh uh, and experience like you did an up dog when you're lengthening, you're trying to reach out of the core. I know you probably won't move your ribs that high up, but this whole center piece of the body, we're trying to get that to, to get pretty taut, T-A-U-T, that kind of taut, or core taut. And as you lean forward, your right hamstring kind of buckles under and strengthens. And then as we stretch the left foot to the right foot, kind of a funny instruction, because they're not really stretching together, but get a feel of your standing forward bend, whether it's blocks supporting you the whole time, 
or whether you like to let your hips lift behind you and your spine dangle out of the pelvis. And how often does the spine get to do that? So not very much, but when your head lowers down, you know, there's a lot of pressure into the circulation of breathing here. So sense the spine. Again, you can have your hands on your blocks too. If you're near a wall, you can reach to the wall and stretch back. This is another nice way to do this type of work. So there's many ways to help yourself out. Do what feels helpful for you. Okay. And then those of us that are in the dangle shape, we'll meet back up on the blocks. And then as the feet are coming back to each other, touching big toes, let the right leg reach back, and we're already in the high lunge. So I would slide your blocks closer besides your left foot so you have them when you need to come down. But if you're already using your leg muscles to kind of hold you up, try to come up to that high lunge. And if it's a little wiggly into the foot, you can always move your lunge next to a wall, right? You could get closer to a wall and use that besides you and see if you can kind of manage that stretch to the front of the right thigh. If you're in the middle, right, you don't really have as much support, you know, to enable the factor of lifting out of the pelvis. So you do the best you can. I know some of us like the challenge of the arms up or the hands on the hips. But if a wall is nearby and you like to use it, just, just reach for it. Don't knock over everything in your surroundings, but do the best that you can. Not, lock, not knocking over any lights. Okay, get a feel where the right thigh is stretching back and then lean your weight forward through that left leg, hands to the blocks. Okay, lower down the back knee. I like low lunges as well because I like to stretch my quad, but not everyone likes it in their knee. So if that's too much, you can let the knee flow up a tiny bit but we're going to emerge into our quads here when we get to the wall. So take a moment here in the lunge. And then I want you to fully move the left foot back and have your hands um, on the blocks flat. So the blocks go all the way low, hands on top, and then shift your hips just forward and then lengthen the ribs up. Okay, I know you you're might be like, eye-oriented lifting up your head, but try just to lengthen the hips forwards. Yeah, you probably might have a vision long ago, these up dog pictures of you look straight in front. This is where we want to work with our neck. And as you move your spine back to table, I like table with the blocks, round your back, chin to chest, And then gently through spine neutral. Okay, so now come on back. If you want to do child's pose before you get to the wall, fine. If you're, if you're happy to move to a wall space, this is the time. So I want you to get your props near your wall space. So you only have a bolster. Um, one blanket is plenty. If you like a second blanket for legs up the wall over your body, then you can bring your other one and a sandbag and your blocks. Yeah, I think that's it. So bolsters is on the side. So you're gonna lower down so that your feet are up at the wall and your spine <coughs> is lengthening. After the last arch, it doesn't, all these movements with the spine, it gets pretty strong from the changing phases that we go through. Okay, so let's, let's not use the block here to start out. We'll have our feet about in that hips distance pattern, I like to sense where my hands touch to my legs, my elbows are relaxed. And then if you notice, once you let your spine focus, come into focus with your feeling body, you might feel where your body weight kind of gravitates towards. Right, so you might decide, oh, this blanket's too high. You know, I want you to be a little careful with the blanket. We're not trying to create more flexibility um, going forward with our neck or flexing it. It's already plenty flexible, I imagine. Okay, I'm trying to get that tilt. 
to get the vertebral, the transverse, so it doesn't get out of line, depending on what you're working on with your neck. So have your feet apart, of course, and as you push into your feet, okay, find how much you push in till there's a slight tilt at the pelvis, like you're, you're moving into lifting your tailbone up, okay? So kind of hold that. It might feel like some pelvic uh, or some leg uh, concentration. And then as you let the hips lift up, you can move your arms down, your hands down. And kind of be just a little cautious here on how far up your feet are. So if you lift up and you feel like it's tightening in your back, then walk your feet up a little bit. You know, just kind of play with it. Use the wall because it's so great to have it for bridge poses. Okay. Arms don't have to be here, they could be overhead too. Some people prefer this. Okay. Now lower the spine. Let the feet stay about where they are. If you have to move them down, okay. But see if you can assign them their location for a few moments here. Inhale here, belly expands. Okay. And then exhale, push into your feet and lift up the spine and lift up the hips. And exhale, lower down. Okay, I'm not sure I did the breath in, intelligently there. So <clears throat> center of the spine, inhale, belly full. Exhale, I'm gonna stay centered here. Inhale, lift up. Make sure I get my breath right with the movements. Exhale, lower down. Okay, now this next time we're using a block. So inhale, and exhale, lift up your hips. Okay, take one block, place it under the back of the pelvis. So that means that it, it kind of feels like it's near your tailbone here. So now I can have my block at the mid-height. I can also turn it up, and that doesn't mean I can do it, you can't do it or anything. It depends on what you feel comfortable with today. It does kind of hook at the tail area if it's all the way <clears throat> up to this height. This might be a little challenging. Uh, some of us like to do this. This is the only place we can get the block this high is when our feet are at the wall. So this way you can lower your feet down and, and have this kind of that high lunge stretch in your quads. It's nice. If your block is at the second height, that's great. We still pause you. And of course, shoulders. I like to feel how I can get my shoulders a little bit under here and my chest to open. Okay, arms flow down, palms open. And let the breath increase your focus to the heart. This is a really good. Heart opening pose. So take a few slow breaths. Now, this is not a good one to roll your head side to side, so don't <clears throat> be careful not to follow what I'm doing. If you get tired and you need to put your feet up at the wall, don't go for it. It might even feel good. Just getting the spine <clears throat> used to being um, in such alternating states of movement that we've done through the class. Pushing into what, right? So I push into my feet. I want you to try to push into your feet into the wall. So if your feet are down and they go back up. And then as you lift your hips, slide the block away and spine down. 
And once your spine centers down, uh, be clear that the waist relaxes. And then the feet lower down. And then I want you to slide the blanket. And if you didn't use it, then you want it again. I want you to use it for this. So we'll slide the blanket and ourselves back from the wall so that you have your bolster. Right? Everyone's got that somewhere. You put it on the right side and then right leg is down. The left leg crosses over to the bolster. Okay. If you happen to have brought your ball, use it at the safer moment. And then add your sandbag. If it's too much on, on the hip to put sand on it and you already feel enough, then don't use it. You might feel like this is just too much pressure. So if you already feel the sensation in your hip and the spine stretching through into the hip, then you're fine without a sandbag. It's an option all the time. It's I mean, the sandbags are primarily um, an effective grounding, kind of anchoring your attention, feeling kind of the the body weightedness. So you're grounded. Pretty simple, but it does help open it up. So it does put some resistance in the tissues. So you'll feel probably a little more with it. So left arm is out. Head probably can turn easily in this one to the left side. And then as you breathe slow, feel if there's movement in the abdomen, or maybe there's movement in the ribs. It can merge. This one is a good one when you feel that merge of abdomen and ribs. Kind of a rib dome. Okay, once you've had a thorough sensation through that hip, and you turn your head back center, uh, switch sides. Take time, spine, back to center, and then, <clears throat> then you move the bolster to the left. <clears throat> Be sure <clears throat> that the crossover comes out of the back. So your, you know, my visual usually is like um, kicking a ball in a field or something. So it's like you're stretching out of your back into the hip and then through the leg. And you're not gonna probably go kick a ball in your in your yard right now, but have that that's that maybe helpful visual. Maybe your visual is is very different. Maybe there's none. But sand could go on the exterior leg. Yeah, and get a feel for opening that right arm. Rolling your head to the right. Breathing slow. And measure the pace of the breath. Feeling that you can work with that emptying of the lungs. Is there any area that you're kind of latching and contracting into? Maybe it's hip, maybe it's just the thoughts around anything you're responding to in your brain. See if you can exist in yourself. Breathing and experiencing that rotation 
It's kind of fun because it's the leg that rotates and then the waist stays kind of centered, but the ribs are rotating. So it's a bit of a circulation journey, isn't it, in your middle? And then head turns to the right. Maybe a roll would be better. So just let your head roll. Now, after kind of wringing it out, feeling compression, we're going to work on just that flushing out through the legs. So that can still bring up things, right, as far as lungs, pressure, ribs. And if you're not comfortable with legs up the wall, you can put legs up a bolster, too, if you feel like oh, that's just too much right now. Don't, don't feel like you have to go that far. But when you take your sand off, and we get oriented towards the wall completely. We'll use movement out of this pose by rolling to the left. Yep. Yeah. And then coming up and take the bolster. And hopefully you're really close to the wall and you can get it there. And the blanket, you might want to bring it up to a little higher than you had the last pose or lower. But once you get onto your bolster, remember you've got to be really close to the wall to make this work. So it feels obnoxious when you try to get your sitting bones at the wall. But you do the best you can, however funny the shape looks. And then you roll on the shoulder backing to get your legs to swing up. Okay, give it a try. If you're not going to work with the wall and you're going to do other things like legs up the chair or maybe a chair shoulder stand, anything you can get to be inverted. <clears throat> The bigger thing about the inversion is to have the pelvis up. Uh, so if your legs are up on a chair, it wouldn't be you know, classified as much as an inversion. You're trying to really work on the totality of the diaphragm and the breathing muscles. So we add a sandbag to the feet, finale, and with the spine in its natural design, this is kind of its, I don't know if you can say this is its natural design, but it feels like it's a heightened state in the spine to have it in an extension. So when we move our arms open to cactus, really take charge of the slow and deep breaths. As if you wanna get kind of lost in that deep, and then the exhale kind of takes you out. And at some point, you gotta go back around into the inhale, which has the stimulating effect. And the exhale to soothe. Feel openness, circulation through the legs, the low back and the hips. And just feel how you respond internally if you're having any challenge with breathing respiratory, anything, or even just the pressure in the upper, upper sphere of the body, reversing the flow out of the feet. I mean, something in your body at any given moment is going to have the retention, whether you're standing up upright, it goes to your, your feet, your lower legs. 
And this way it's going to put pressure at the top. So strengthening in the middle in the diaphragm, resting the heart. Even if all you did this for was to get to this point where the heart rate slowed down. Blood pressure lowers. Now, if you can bend your knees and take some care when you move the sand away. So get a feel. Sometimes it's going to feel really nice to just work with the knees bending, sand on the feet. And then when you move the sand away, how you want your feet to be for a few moments with them at the wall. Maybe they're still back up the wall because that felt so good for your legs. And then as you begin to come out. Let's try to complete at the wall. So we'll roll and we'll come up so that we're sitting with our back to the wall. It doesn't have to be like a, a deep curve in your back. You don't have to over stress it out. You might feel like you want to push your back a little to the wall, but then your head tends to go forward. So you have to find a nice balance. The wall is such a good teacher because my shoulders can move back towards the wall and then my natural arch happens and my neck lengthens up. And so let your hands rest on your thighs, giving yourself a slow breath, and gathering your attention to feeling the support of your practice and even the common good from the group. Let's bring our hands up in front of our heart so the palms are touching and moment of bowing into the space behind.